I think we'll kick it off there. Um, so again, sorry if you've heard this already. My name's Jared Asquith, uh, one of the engineers here at Nexus. I'll be hosting today. Um, we've got Rick Nord, our Global Technologies Manager, doing a talk on a multi-limbed robotic platform we've got here. Um, just with it, we're keeping it pretty casual. So as we go through, if there's questions, um, just use the Q&A feature down the bottom, raise your hand, um, and we can uh, interrupt Rick and or stop at the end of each slide and, and go through them. Um, over to you, Rick, if you want to kick off. Thanks, Jared. Assuming you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you well. OK, excellent. Uh, yeah, as Jared said, Rick Nord, uh, Global Technologies Manager here at Nexus. Uh, thanks for joining. So we're doing a couple of these every week. Uh, really started with COVID maybe two or three months ago. Uh, people at home, um, we thought we'd share some of our, our ideas. Can't really go and visit people anymore. So um, we thought we'd start with this one. About an hour long, um, covers uh, what we call Magneto, but um, I want to cover a couple other bits as well. Very quick, just an introduction on myself. So engineering and uh, an NDT background. Uh, my role really here at Nexus is early engagement for key clients. Uh, what does that mean really? So it's bringing it all together. So it's making sure that clients understand that Nexus really has that end-to-end -end solution. So we work with uh, we work with operators, we work with service providers. We have a lot of partners along the way as well and making sure that people understand that we can bring it all together uh, and that really be sort of that one-stop shop. Um, the part that excites me is really the technology. So we'll share some of the new technology today, but that, that's the part that I get excited about. So it's and that new technology uh, with a global application, being able to deploy that into the field and uh, sort of learning from that as well. Uh, so how we do it, I can share a little bit on that as well, but how we mainly do that is through collaboration. So we have a team of uh, engineers and Jared and myself is part of that, but we also have uh, innovation. We have sort of cross, uh, cross collaboration partners that we work with as well. And then there's a couple of uh, Nexus uh, sister companies along the way. Jared mentioned this, but if you have a couple of questions, just ask him. Um, I'm happy to stop, go through them, um, and we will just take you along the way as well. Um, so really the agenda for today is a bit of an introduction on Nexus as a company that we work for. Uh, and then I want to really start with why have we done Magneto? Um, so go back a little bit um, in the time machine and just see how the market's currently doing some of the, um, the inspections and maintenance work, but also uh, have a look at where we've, we've come from. Um, then I wanna show Magneto, share a couple of the specs on where Magneto is currently sitting. Um, so you can just see that behind me. Um, you can see where Magneto is currently sitting. Um, and then I wanna chat about some of the, the roadmaps as well uh, on where we're seeing the future. So there's a, a few different roadmaps. There's six months, one year, um, and then there's a five year plan as well. Uh, so that, that's really sort of the, uh, the agenda for today. All right, so just a little bit around Nexus. Um, for us, it's really the, the focus on technology. So it's focused on the end-to-end -end experience. And I guess that's starting from, we've got a scope of work. That could be NDT, could be maintenance, could be inspection, could be painting, overhauling. And it's really making sure that we engage at a very, very early time with a client and say, okay, well, what's your problem? Be it NDT, be it inspection, maintenance, well, what's your problem? How can we solve that? And it's really focusing on the technology rather than being stuck in the, we used to do it that way, it's worked for the past 20 years. Is there a better way to do it um, in this day and age? And it's focusing on the um, the end-to-end -end experience. And there's wide capability, so some of the things we cover is the robotics, we cover things like drones, NDT, there's maintenance, inspection, and also the engineering side of things. So there is an engineering capability to be able to look at scopes and then look at um, inspection methods, look at what's the best uh, Robotic system, what's the best NDT system, uh, then bring that all together as well. Everything we try and do is to expand your business. So we, very important for us is to build partners. We have some really good industry partners. We have some great uh, operators we work with, service provider companies, technology partners as well. But the key thing for our business is to expand what you're doing. Um, and it's really that value add proposition. Um, so a couple of things I want to go through. So some of the couple of collaborations we're working on as well. Uh, we have a really good collaboration with uh, CSRO, um, who has been part of the development for Magneto. So I can share a little bit on what they're doing currently with that as well. 
But really from a, an exit point of view, so founded in 2014 uh, as a rental business, and that's still one of the key revenue streams, short-term rental if you need uh, inspection equipment, robotics, maintenance equipment. Need it for a day, need it for a month, need it for six months. Uh, that's still a very big revenue stream. Um, and the equipment's available uh, in Australia, Singapore, and Houston. So we've got three offices uh, with about 40 staff. That keeps expanding um, rapidly as well. So I think uh, we're about 40 plus staff at the moment. And really that continuous um, sort of building of the partners, that's really what's important for us. We, the freedom to operate, being able to, to share as much as we can with our, our operators, see where they want to take it, um, share with our service providers and see where they see the operators wanting to take it. And then also lastly, sharing with our technology providers. So there are, for Magneto specifically, there are some, um, some SLAM systems, some local autonomy, some global autonomy systems that we're working with uh, technology partners, but it's being open enough to, um, to share, have open source as much as we can and build those partnerships. Cause that's really where we see the, um, the technology being able to drive forward rather than sort of trying to protect it, trying to keep it to ourselves. Uh, we see that it's probably a better way just to expand on, um, on the market, but also expanding on what you're doing for the business. And that's really where we see the, the value add. Um, three different uh, sort of companies within with Nexus. So Nexus is the parent company. That's really where the uh, some the solutions, the um, there's a marketing team and the admin side of it sits. Um, and then there's the the 6D side, so custom engineering, um, but a machine shop more specifically. So we would have a an, a client come to us um, either through Nexus or 6D. Uh, look at early engagement. Okay, we've got a problem. How do we fix it? Um, Nexus get involved from an engineering perspective and build on a solution. Work with the client along the way, see how that works, and then um, the luxury price is having 6D essentially at the ready to machine um, anything that we need. Uh, so it's a full machine shop with uh, CNC's EDM capabilities as well. Uh, just down the road from us, we're in um, Western Australia, um, but they're just up the road, a couple of minutes drive. Um, sort of talk to them most days as well. Uh, and then Lab 61, so we've had the early engagement with the client, we, we know what the problem is, we've taken the journey with them along the way. Uh, Nexus was involved from the engineering perspective to get the best solution, best MDT, best maintenance technique, best deployment method. Six days, machine all that up, we factory acceptance test it. One step before we go to site, and this is really key for us, is being able to make sure that operators, service providers, but also us can operate the equipment successfully. So it's a great thing to have technology, but actually going to site and delivering that successfully is a key part for us. So that's where Lab 61 fits in. It's a, a training RTO, um, it brings it all together. So it talks about robotics on how to deploy them, but not just how to deploy them, also how to get them back. Uh, make sure that we, we understand what the problem is in terms of maintenance, make sure we look after the equipment, uh, and then how to get from point A to point B in terms of scan plans as well. So that's really where um, Lab 61 comes in, which is then part of the, the Nexus brand as well. I think I mentioned, yeah, briefly, uh, Australia, Singapore, Houston as well. Um, we ship equipment around. There is uh, equipment bases in each um, country, so but we're happy to ship equipment around as well as need be. Um, I think I covered most of these. Just one of the, um, the extra things I guess I wanted to add with this is the rapid prototyping type for us. So one thing with Magneto you'll see, and we'll talk about it again, but it's modularity, it's universal um, use. The key part for us is working with operators, service providers, clients in general to see what the problem is, but then being able to deliver that in the shortest time frame possible. So that rapid prototyping is really where 6D can help. So rather than having six months to a year to develop a solution, um, where Nexus comes in with the engineering capability, where 6D comes in with the, um, the machining capability, it's being able essentially to do that rapid prototyping in a very, very short time. Um, I'll briefly mention some of the, the Nexus revenue stream. So there is the rental revenue stream, uh, but there is also the long-term rental, uh, which is quite a big one for us in the, the market at the moment, Capital, uh, CapEx being non-existent essentially. We have uh, a lot of clients that would engage in a long-term rental instead. So that's a three month rental where you essentially just pay the equipment daily. Um, you rent it daily and you have that equipment on your shelf and there's a lot of benefits around that in terms of being able to service the equipment, calibrations and um, 
things along the way. Don't think there'll be many questions on that, but I'll just give it two seconds if there is any. Uh, or go direct there, it hasn't come any questions yet, so. Um, so the, the fun stuff, I guess, so jumping into the Magneto sort, I really want to start, rather than just saying this is Magneto, this is what it does, uh, these are the specs, I wanted to take three steps back and just talk about why we're developing Magneto. Um, I wanted to share a little bit on what we've seen in the market, um, how we've already started overcoming some of those, so the Gen 2 robotics, but then the last step is where are we seeing um, some of the, the shortcomings as well. So pretty standard asset uh, storage facility. Um, wanted to do a couple of UT readings along the way. So for instance, scaffold are hooking up. It still seems to be a pretty big demand in the industry, scaffolding rope access, which is okay, but also need to look at why we're doing it. So if it's maintenance, okay, that's fine. If you want to um, decommission, okay, that's fine. But if you're taking a couple of spot readings for measurements, wall thickness readings, uh, doing a close visual inspection for a video. Um, is it really needed to, to build the full scaffold? Um, so I wanted to just start paint that picture um, access. So when we start talking about Magneto, uh, when we start talking about robotics, one of the things I want to focus on is access and dexterity. So that'd be one of the things I want to talk about a bit later. Uh, confined space entry. So again, a very uh, standard practice in the industry. Uh, it, I guess fortunate enough for us, it's gone the other way now, where we are looking at reducing confined space entry. There are still sometimes where you can't, um, which we can look at, but at the moment, the key thing for us is avoiding a confined space entry. So when I talk about some of the Gen 2 robotics, we'll start talking about cleaning methods, we can start talking about how to reduce that confined space entry, but there are still limitations around uh, obstructions, and then that's where Magneto comes in. So I want to focus a little bit, just um, remind everyone about a confined space entry. Uh, one of the other things I guess we've seen in the industry is months worth of planning, uh, mobilization of equipment, mobilization of people, uh, have our safety things in place, we have our confined space entry permits in place. Uh, we've gone through all the program, uh, planning, we've gone scan plans, we get to site after all this planning and we take 10 readings. Um, we take 10 readings of the current scope. So this scope might be UT spot readings to get a wall thickness reading. We've taken out the 10 readings, pat on the back and now we're done. One thing we haven't done is looked at the rest of the asset. What are we missing in the process? We're already doing the planning. We're already getting people on board. We're already there. What else are we missing out on the process? So that's one of the other things where the robotics comes in. And then one thing I want to share with Magneto as well is while we're there, there's no difference to us. It takes all the data we need immediately, but it also takes the data we don't need. Um, we don't know that we're going to need in the future. So that's a key part for us when it comes to some of the robotics techniques we'll talk about is making sure that we've put all this effort in and essentially 1% extra effort, you can get humidity data if that's what you want it to. The system needs to get there while it's walking to location or while it's driving to location, it's taking wall thickness readings along the way. If you're, you're driving such a way, all of a sudden you're taking weld integrity readings. Are there cracks along the way? What's the coating like? What's the coating thickness like? Rather than just focusing, what do we need to do today? Um, while we're doing that, we're getting all this data as well. And I'll share that a little bit um, with what Magneto is capable of as well. So it was really for me, just a, I guess a journey on why Magneto started, um, what we, I guess we see as a couple of um, hurdles in the market. Uh, firstly, we're getting robotics into the market, but then the next part I want to share is some of the robot robots we've already uh, implemented into the market where they might have some limitations and then that's where Magneto comes in. So one of the first ones, uh, magnetic track callers, uh, heavily proven in the market, uh, essentially has a, I'm assuming you can see my mouse, Jared, uh, magnets on the bottom, uh, place it on a carbon steel asset, drive around, universal, modular, you can change to uh, ultrasonic readings if you wanted to, do pulse eddy current readings, eddy current readings. Uh, on the left hand side is a custom developed system um, by Nexus. Uh, one of the key things we get with confined space entry is we have to do a confined space entry because we have to clean. 
Um, that's okay, but I guess we want to take a slightly different approach is why don't we get the robots? Why don't we get the crawler to do that? Uh, place it through the manway, place it through the, the entry, get the crawler to where you want it to be, and we do some cleaning while we're there. Uh, all built into one system, so clean and inspect, you're cleaning, you're doing ultrasonic readings, you're also doing your, uh, your close visual inspections, all just from a single pass without having to do um, a manned entry. Um, have you got one behind you there, Jared? Is that what I see on your right? Uh, yeah, I've actually got the exact one. So. Oh, I'm bringing that up. Um. Oh, sorry. you can see that. Yeah, so that's the um, yeah, system specifically developed for an operator um, locally here in Australia. They wanted to carry out some work. Um, they wanted to do compliance-based entry, actually, and there wasn't really an option available to do cleaning on robotics, um, especially in Australia. So, yeah, system we developed over about a three-month period. Um, sort of early engagement with um, a local operator. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, just taking a slightly different approach rather than just going, okay, we're doing a compliance-based entry um, and because we have to clean. So on the next ones, I guess we're, we're pushing into the market. Um, great improvement over, say, compliance-based entry or a scaffold, even rope access, uh, is some of the magnetic wield systems. Uh, this was a project actually carried out very recently. Um, conventionally, it used to be done with rope access, quite a small asset, meter and a half in diameter, 30 meters tall, a long vertical drop. Uh, used to do compliance by century. Essentially take uh, about 200 spot readings, um, Cardinal Points, North East, South West, and about half a meter apart. So another about 200 readings. Uh, we saw this problem, uh, engaged with the, the operator, and had a discussion about why don't we avoid the compliance space entry, but while we're doing it, we can take more data points. So we carried that as, this, I think it was last week, uh, rather than 200 spots, we ended up with 20,000 locations. Um, but the key part of all that, something would that normally take four, five, six days, we did in one day. Um, so we're moving forward to some of the robotic stuff, at least trying to get people out of um, some dangerous environments as well. But while we're doing it, we get more data without really doing much extra. Um, the crawler needs to drive to location in any way. Why don't we get um, HD data? We can have a look at the coding condition. If there was a coding, this doesn't have coding on it. But look at the, um, if there's internal corrosion, look at the well condition um, and see if we see any other damage mechanisms come up as well. It's a really sort of big push that um, we're pushing on with from, from a robotics point of view. Because last one I want to share on uh, where we've come from, where we are now in terms of robotics to try and avoid that compliance space entry. The, um, the access problem around scaffolding, rope access, uh, difficult situations for people to be in, but also the lack of data we're taking, even though we do all those things. Um, drones, so Elios, flyability uh, number two, really good drone. Um, we're having the fleet at the moment, you can do uh, your HD video, there's some lighting um, capability to be able to adjust lighting, um, to look at wells from different angles, um, and really good flight time as well for your compliance space entry. Um, I guess the reason I bring these up is really just to show where we see Magneto fit in. So the track crawlers are great if you don't have a, a sharp corner to go across, if you don't have obstructions to go into, uh, if you have a carbon steel asset. The uh, magnetic wheel systems are fantastic. You've got a manway drive through, you've got a couple of obstacles. If that allows you to climb over, that's okay. They're great. You've really good payload. Um, you can stick your NDT on there but they tend to be limited in what you can develop further. And then the last one's the drone. So we rent these out and we sell them. They're great for inspections, but one of the things they sometimes lack is payload. So you can get to where you want to be. You can get really good quality of what you want to see. Um, now you find a damage mechanism, you find a crack, you find some wall loss, you find a blister and a coating. What's the next step? Um, and that's really where, I guess I wanted to just share where we see Magneto fit in. So one of the key things for us is dexterity. So those, those crawlers, what they do really well on carbon steel, um, Magneto has the capability of doing that on carbon steel, but all are also other assets. Um, so if you have a non ferro acid, it's concrete for instance, I'll share a couple of things on where Magneto will be able to help with that. Um, but also being able to climb over internal furniture. So if there is a, 
an I beam in the way, if there's uh, baffles in the way, if there's being able to transition from one pipe to another uh, without having to build a scaffold, without having to do rope access, Magneto has the capability to then transfer over and continue the, um, the inspection, the maintenance, the um, whatever you need to do from that side. Um, I'll take this off the wall in a second as well, but um, really for us, it, it's about the universal uh, deployment method as well. So some of those systems are off the shelf. Obviously, we um, obviously expanded on those off the shelf units, added a, a cleaning capability, which we build in house with programs and cleaning. Uh, but Magneto is a universal uh, deployment system. So whatever the method of NDT is, so if it's ultrasonics, eddy current, uh, radiography, that can be attached to Magneto without too much integration and it will go and do the inspection. If you wanted to do painting, for instance, there's a capability within Magneto, attach that, tell it what the acid is and we'll go and apply a coating. Um, if you have some screws to undo, if you have uh, fixtures to undo, tighten, loosen, that's where Magneto comes in. So really for us, it's a, a universal deployment platform um, and you're not fixed with only being, uh, being able to do NDT, you're not fixed with only being able to do up bolts or only being able to do um, painting as well. Um, and the last one I guess I haven't mentioned, we've spoken about a couple of times is the cleaning. So there's a, a couple of features on Magneto to, uh, to carry out some cleaning as well, depending on the asset. Um, I guess hand in hand with universal is modularity. So there's four different roadmaps. Um, and I can explain those a little bit later on, but there's four different roadmaps that we're working on at the moment. Um, and all four of them are based on modularity. So as a system is there and as a system is behind me is one configuration. Uh, a key thing for us is to have software that you can remove a leg, for instance, um, and add a, an NDT method on it, program it away, and now you can do an NDT method. Um, if you wanted to add a, a fifth limb uh, for round corner inspection or painting, for instance, having that modularity within our system to configure them, integrate them, and then basically go and do the, um, the task at hand. Um, so really, the, and I'll talk about the roadmaps um, probably in the next couple of slides as well. Uh, but really, that's where we see a key thing over some of those off-the-shelf units. Um, it's just that modularity, uh, modularity they have proprietary systems. Uh, is really the modularity is quite hard to work with. Uh, one of the other ones is payload. So I briefly mentioned the, the drone. Um, fantastic. You don't have to do the, the rope access. You don't have to do the scaffolding. One of the things with battery operated systems is the payload. So we're working on um, about a 10 kilo payload with Magneto. Uh, and that's Magneto itself plus then 10 kilos. So really we see it as a, a floor detector you want to put on there. If you want to put a canister for um, some lubricant, for instance, there's modularity and then there's payload capabilities to be able to expand on those as well. And one of the last things we'll just talk about in the, the roadmaps, for instance, is the future development. So we have a, a I can probably talk about that later, but uh, we have a structure on how we'd like to engage with clients um, and how we share the Magneto technology. As part of that, these the um, subscription service, which allows a partner to help develop that roadmap. So we have some very good ideas on where we want to go. We, we've engaged with clients, operators, service providers along the way. They help build the roadmap as early adopters. But one thing that would help yourself as well, if you wanted to, to early adopt or do a subscription service, is you actually have access to do a modular universal system to, to what you want to do. And it's being able to actually help with that roadmap specifically to your application. Um, I'll stop there for a sec. The video is next. Um, we'll explain a little bit on what Magneto does. Uh, I think while the video plays, I'm not sure if there's any questions, Jared. Um, but while the video plays, I'll take Magneto off um, and I'll show you a couple of key features on it. Uh, I've muted the audio for the video because um, I've explained that there's a couple of screenshots afterwards I can share. Uh, if it's if it's blotchy along the way, don't stress. I've, I've stress, uh, taken all those screenshots out. We can talk about it afterwards.
Hey Rick, just while this video is playing, um, is there anywhere where um, people could watch this with the audio and? Yeah, YouTube. So Nexus has a, a YouTube channel. Um, if you go on YouTube, type in Nexus. There's uh, all our latest videos are there. It's also on LinkedIn um, or probably one of the other places, the website. So just nexus.com.au. Uh, there's a brand new website coming out as well, but Magneto, if you type in Magneto on the search tab, it has all our um, equipment on there. So for rental, purchase, uh, long-term lease. And there's a video of Magneto specifically in there as well. Thanks, Rick. And just, just a question coming through. Um, the video had some of the sensors that are on the um, crawler. Do you want to just explain a couple of those? Yeah, I can do that. Um, what I want to do first is explain the, the limb. Um, and then on the next slide, there's, a, I guess, a couple of reasons on why we have some of the sensors. But that's a good one, mate. I'll, um, I'll explain that next. Um, so while I've done, I've taken a, a limb off. Um, the Really, the key thing for us is this is a limb for a, a certain application, um, uh, three degrees of freedom, four degrees of freedom, depending on how you look at it. But we can make this longer, we can make this shorter, um, we can make it out of different materials. So there's some applications at the moment that we're looking at for EX applications, uh, which would have a, a different material. Uh, it would have a different foot. One of the things I just wanted to share is there are two or three different road maps for different feet as well. So this one I'm showing is a permanent electromagnet. Uh, so it, if you turn the power off, it's a magnet. Uh, if you turn the power onto it, it would disengage the magnet. The key thing for us there is if you're on an asset, the power fails, uh, at least the permanent magnet keeps magneto on a surface. So that's really the key thing for us. That's one of the roadmaps. So it's a permanent electromagnet just underneath. Little gimbal allows you to rotate. There's um, a few degrees of freedom as well, just to allow you to step onto different contours. So we don't have to necessarily program the, the radius in. We don't have to program the, the asset thickness. Uh, this gimbal allows us all that information um, to be able to adjust. So that's one of the roadmaps. Another roadmap we're working on at the moment. Uh, so I spoke about the EX one, but another one is gecko feet. So magnets are great. Uh, if you have carbon steel. So there's a lot of uh, inquiries we're getting at the moment. There's one of the operators we're working with, one of our partners that wants to do stainless steel applications. Uh, so we're currently working on some gecko feet, uh, which is essentially replacing the magnet with a vacuum. So that what allows us to do is being able to do on uh, non-ferro assets. So that's one of the roadmaps we're currently working on as well. Um, where 6D is helping, we also have a few different uh, 3D printers as well, but they're machining some of these parts up for us. Um, parts that don't take low tension strain, um, we 3D print them. Uh, they're standard parts, got a part number associated with them. If they break, they, um, we need more spares, top that into the 3D printer and that just we print them uh, in a few hours. So that's really the key thing for us where, um, where 6D can really help with the, um, the rapid prototyping. Um, I'll just pause this on the one slide. Uh, I haven't got it engaged in this one, but what I want to show you just while we're talking about sensors, there is a, a little orange piece you can just see in there. Uh, that's one of the sensors that test for, uh, to make sure that the probe is actually stuck onto the surface. So as a little force measurement, uh, once we've engaged, we're on the surface, it pulls back just slightly. There's a little tension measurement in there to make sure that, yes, we have engaged, and then it would move to the next sequence. So there's, there's a bit of programming and sequencing uh, along the way as we're moving to. Um, what it would do if it didn't find a good seating location, it would take off and then try and reseat itself uh, as well. A uh, couple of extra things. So this was a, a camera that we've put in as well. So there's some HD camera options, there's some SD camera options. Uh, where you can do your, your close visual inspection or just your general uh, visual inspection as well. Um, this is a prototype, so these have now uh, do have site uh, appropriate connectors and um, housings and bits and pieces on it as well. Um, one of the other ones you might have seen a bit later on as well, uh, you can just, there's um, a point cloud uh, sensor in this one as well. So what that allows us to do is be able to 
walk up to a surface, walk up to an edge, see the edge, uh, make sure we don't step over it, which is the first part around local autonomy and then global autonomy. But it also has uh, 3D point cloud capability. So as we're walking, we've deployed without really us having to do anything extra. It is taking LiDAR data um, of everything around us as we're walking, um, which then allows us to export all that data and do some measurements along the way as well. Um, so that's the, the limb. I just want to show you the, the body as well. Um, I've got a few questions, Rick, which you could probably answer as you're showing the body. Sure. Um, so we'll start, is there a wireless option and um, sort of what's the level of, of autonomy? with it. Um, so I think it will come back to the autonomy, but wireless option. Yeah, the, there is. Um, the difficult part for us is twofold. Uh, one is battery weight, which takes away from payload. Uh, as you add more batteries, you get more battery life, but the, obviously the negative around that is you end up with a greater payload. Uh, so one of the things one of our roadmaps is to detether and have a wireless system. Uh, but in terms of EX capability, we're pushing forward with the umbilical, um, with the permanent magnets, we're pushing forward with the umbilical system. And then with the vacuum, uh, there are a couple options. We can either have the vacuum on board or we can have the vacuum about 30 to 60 meters away from the asset with the controller. Uh, but it's just just have that trade-off uh, around one of the things we really liked back magneto over a drone for instance is being able to have that payload have that runtime without having to bring back and recharge the batteries um, but in, in short there is a there is a roadmap it's fourth on the list um, in terms of roadmaps but there is a roadmap around um, detailing because we're getting a couple of um, really interesting inquiries for that one as well um, on the very last slide, there's actually a webinar next week on one of our wireless crawlers called the SAR. Um, it's on the very last slide. I've got uh, a list of photo there. Or if you look at our website as well, um, SAIR, there is a wireless system that allows you to do NDT methods if you're looking for a specific um, wireless system as well. Just for uh, Thanks, Rick. And just a, a couple more there. Um, so what's the sort of approximate weight of the system without a payload? Um, and then a, just an IP rating or AX rating. Sure. Um, okay, so the, the weight itself depends on the, the unit. Um, so modularity, tether, um, length, uh, depending on if we're going with a three degree system or a four degree system. Uh, but for us, we're aiming for less than 15 kilos. Um, so single man lift on site, aiming for less than 15 kilos, so one five. Um, and it's really, so the umbilical, depending if you get a 30 meter umbilical, or 100 meter umbilical, obviously that would, uh, would add to your weight. Um, and then also what peripherals do you want to add onto it? So Magneto is great to be it's universal and modular, but you need to add another system to it. So whatever you're doing, if you're doing your painting, or you're doing blasting, you're doing NDT inspection along the way, you need to add a payload um, to that as well. But we, we're keeping everything less to about 15 kilos. Um, as well. So IP rating, um, different systems, different ideas. So we're working with splash zone. So as an IP, I think it's 66 for memory, but it's uh, one meter for half an hour um, is our, our goal with most of the development. Uh, and then in terms of EX, so one of the roadmaps, so we one of the, the roadmaps we're really working on at the moment is the EX uh, roadmap. So let's see if it's the next slide. Yeah, we can talk about that. Well, one of the, the things on the roadmap at the moment is the, the EX side. So we're, uh, this is actually the, the prototype for the EX. We've had to change a few things to make it EX compliant. A um, couple of things with the motors that was um, working on as well. And then in terms of the control box, there's a couple of things that uh, we had to improve to, to make it EX compliant. Um, we're probably uh, another six months away, um, approximately for the EX, um, there's a lot of certification and um, sort of testing along the way, destructive testing actually. Um, very interesting process, but yeah, probably about six months away. Um, we have two early adopters that we're working with. Um, 
and they sort of guiding us as well with what they'd like to see in terms of EX. Um, but yeah, if there's interest, um, we're open to some early adopters along the way. Uh, there are people that have signed up for the subscription model as well, um, as it is at the moment. That's what drives our funding, uh, where they sign up for the subscription, they'll get a unit um, when they're happy and when they're ready, and they get to drive the roadmap along the way as well. Well, just, just on that, Rick, um, uh, Transically Safe and AX, just covering that the um, sort of similar vein. Uh, there was a question there about it being intrinsically safe. Yeah, so that's, that's a really, really interesting one. So we, IS and EX are essentially the same, but also different. Um, so EX, IS is a way to get EX. Um, so this is definitely not IS, um, intrinsically safe. Uh, some of the reasoning or majority of the reasoning is the motor power uh, and the control box and what goes in it. Uh, one of the methods to get to EX is to have an intrinsically safe system. Uh, we've gone with a, an oil field system instead. We've gone with uh, pressure compensation, um, which then gives us the EX capability. So non-IS, um, EX uh, is sort of our approach at the moment. I'm not sure if that answered it. Um, they're similar, but um, in, in our approach to get EX, we've gone for the, the, there's four or five different methods you can use. I think that covers it. Um, and there's just one sort of tie in from a question, then we'll move on. Um, the payload, 10 kilos, the design payload. So is that including tether? So the higher you go, you're going to be dragging more tether. Yeah, it's, um, it's a really good question. Um, the, it's such a difficult part for us where people want a longer tether, um, which means sometimes increasing a motor or a magnet. Uh, but as you're increasing the motor and the magnet, uh, strength and capability, you end up actually increasing the, the weight for the system as well. So the 10 kilos is based on the standard unit with standard magnets, standard motor, uh, and a standard umbilical of 30 meters. Uh, so that, and it's an industrial. So the, the video before was a prototype one just to share with people and get some interest, but there's a, uh, fully insulated subsea tether, um, 30 meters that is not included in the payload. So the 10 kilos that we work with at the moment, all the tests are done on 30 meter umbilical hanging, and then you have your 10 kilos to add to your payload. Cool, thanks Rick. We'll, um, we'll move on, there's a few more questions, so now but we'll, we'll kind of go to the end. I just wanna, I guess why I kept holding up Magneto, um, I just really wanted to show you the, the control box. Um, I guess that's where the majority of the smarts sit um, we have gone with an oversized control box for two reasons. Um, future development is one of them. Uh, and then also uh, another one which we've seen is being able to expand on things like the motors. So future development in terms of being able to add an NDT unit in there, being able to add a, um, a water deployment method in there, being able to add um, the vacuum method for the the crawler, for instance, where we do the, the vacuum feed, being able to integrate all of that into the unit. Um, but then the, the next step as well is if someone wants to add something else, we can just build up. I just really wanted to show you that just the, the box where most of the smart sits um, and sort of what we wanted to try and achieve out of that. Um, I've got a slide up. So, I kept talking about roadmaps. Really the key thing for us uh, are these roadmaps. It's where we engage with early adopters, operators, service providers, clients along the way. And you know, we have a really good idea of what we're trying to achieve out of this just through site trials. But we also wanted to see what our clients want out of it. Um, so I guess I just wanted to share the slide. I wanna come back to it maybe a little bit later on, but really the next few slides I wanna share, maybe some of your questions. I'm always gonna refer back to these roadmaps. Um, in our standard roadmap, uh, sort of top uh, center, really starts for us is dexterity. So there's a lot of systems available on the market at the moment that actually does a really good job at inspecting. Um, and they're available, but we wanted to look at where do those come short? So that's why I wanted to share some of those initial robotic ideas first. Where do they fall short where Magneto can pick up? So being able to climb over things, for instance. I'm just gonna move my camera. 
Um, things like path planning. So someone mentioned earlier about um, automation and um, where are we currently? So local autonomy, um, <laughs> it's really the key thing for us is early engagement. It's really hard to do local autonomy without uh, actually having enough data. So the first time you get to site, um, taking your point cloud data, um, understanding where you are, and then things become autonomous. So there are some local autonomy when you're in an asset, if we know the diameter of the asset, if we know the length of the asset. Um, we've had clients share general arrangements uh, with internals, uh, baffles, there's, there's man ways, where they are, uh, where the area of interest is in terms of damage mechanism, and then walk up to those areas of interest um, to then do whatever application that is that we need to do there. So the path planning is there, um, but it's also having people engage at a very, very early stage to make sure that we have enough data to go on out and, um, and do the work as well. Uh, a couple of other things on our, our standard roadmap. So NDT, pretty easy. Um, we can integrate most of the NDT systems. So FOSAR, so foreign object retrieval. So if there is there's some capability in Magneto um, to add a clause on a fifth limb, for instance, or add object retrieval. Um, if you've lost something in an asset, something's been left there, something's been broken off, uh, we see quite a big need for Magneto and being able to um, retrieve those. Uh, scope planning. So one of the, the interesting pushes for us at the moment with Magneto is being able to do scope planning at a very, very early stage. So before we even go to site, uh, Part of Magneto and some of the other robotic development that we're doing is have a simulation software. Whereas if a client gets, uh, has a chat to us early enough, we'll ask what the asset is, we'll ask what damage mechanism you have, we'll ask what your, your problem is if you want to do clean or painting or anything else maintenance wise. And we'll actually build that up in a, a scope planning document, uh, full 3D and people can then see. Key for us is the scan plan um, on how you get the robotics to where they need to be, but more importantly, how do you get them out? Um, and that's really part of the scope planning. We see Magneto is quite a big one for that because it has all the sensors um, built on there. So some ideas in there, there's um, a whole data lake of different bits of uh, technology that can be integrated without us having to do anything separate. It, as soon as you turn it on, it starts recording that data, uh, keeps it in its native format. So if you export that, we might be uh, five years on from now, we might realize that the data we uh, took at that point in time was actually really useful. Keeps that in that native format, so then we can we can still play with that. It's non-proprietary, so really the, the, the freedom to operate is really key for us as we share that. Um, happy to share the data, happy to share the info, happy to share the videos and the IMU data and the metadata and everything that comes with it. Uh, more than happy to sort of share that uh, along the way. Uh, the number of sensors at the moment, uh, I guess it really just depends on our clients. Um, as part of that early adoption program and part of the subscription program, people have given us ideas on what sensors they'd like on board. Um, we integrate them, do some, some factory step and tests and then move on with those as well. So the number of sensors is ever expanding, uh, just depending on what clients would like. Hey Rick, I'm conscious of time, so I'll, I'll, I'll sort of bunch a few questions together. Um, so there's a couple of questions there just on RVI and lighting capabilities. And then um, uh, kind of a similar vein about sort of FOSR capabilities and pool limits. Is the first one lighting, Jaron? Sorry, is that what you said? Uh, lighting and RVI. Okay, um, just what clients would like. So I guess the nice thing about Magneto is it's modular. Um, you add what you like. So we have a couple of full HD systems that you can add to, to that quite easily. Um, pan, tilt and zoom capability. Uh, that comes with it, can record video, can record um, stills as well. So, and that comes with built-in lighting as well. So a couple of nice things is not just forward-facing lighting, but also bleak lighting. Uh, so if you find an area of interest, uh, is a discoloration, is it a crack? Can you look at it from different points of view? Um, so I guess the answer to the, the camera um, and the lighting is whatever you like, there's some really easy systems we have integrated. Um, but if there's a specific requirement around uh, being able to do measurements, for instance, there's some really good software we're working on to be able to take an image um, and then do some measurements of that as well, um, just integrate onto Magneto. What was the next one, sorry, Joe? Uh, thanks for that, Rick. Um, and the next one's just a, a sort of quick, uh, what's the plan for the FOSR 
Um, so maybe the robotic arm that we're using um, and just pulling limits and, and clamping of objects. Yeah, so there's, as Jared said, there's a um, robotic arm we've been um, working on that can easily integrate and that gives you full capability again, um, just through hand control to do real fine manipulation. So if you want to undo something or sneak underneath uh, an internal uh, furniture, for instance, you can sneak in underneath and collect those. Um, but then there's also very, very easy FOSAR kits around, just a, a basic claw, uh, claw that can to grab onto things. There's some basic magnet systems, uh, even on the belly. Uh, if it's carbon steel, then you've got to pick up uh, little nuts and bolts along the way, pick up debris. Uh, or um, if there's some scaffolding bits and pieces, just being able to, to claw that as well. Cool. Thanks, Rick. Um, and just on that FOSAR, sort of the pulling load, I know it's a bit hard. Um, and then we'll move on. Uh, yeah, good one. Um, I'm guessing 10 kilos because the payload's 10. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't really looked at how the moments work out, to be honest. But yeah, I'm, I'm guessing 10 kilos, mate, just because the, um, the payload's 10. Um, obviously, if it's something like a, a long piece that could potentially get obstructed, how do we get it out? Just just have a look. And that's really, I guess, where that scope planning comes in. Do a model of it, see where it is, see where you need to get it out, and then um, work with, with getting it out. Um, so yeah, that, that early engagement before we go to site is um, quite important. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Um, I think I shared most of these. I shared the, the sensor as well. Um, Share the different different roadmaps along the way. Um, some of the ones we're working on. The one that's sort of exciting for me at the moment is being um, able to do non-carbon steel assets as well. Uh, one of the things that would, the, the vacuum feet would also allow us to do is smaller assets. So a lot of these, the videos that you see and the photos and bits that you see, uh, are carbon steel firstly, but really big assets where the the vacuum system is going to allow us to do small bore piping. Um, so if you've got a pipe rack, for instance. Uh, that has a an insulation on it, has some some cladding on it. Uh, there's no real robot capability for that at this point in time, but where we're doing some trials at the moment with a third party to showcase where the vacuum feet on Magneto with a, a CUI method uh, can actually start doing uh, early detection, uh, which is quite a key part for us. Without having to do the ropes, without having to do the scaffolding as well. Um, I haven't really talked about the software much, but I guess this is another one that's part of the roadmaps, just depending on which one we're looking at. Uh, we work with uh, the early adopters and the description service to see what people would like. Uh, so we have a basic uh, GUI that we work with, which gives you the, the cameras and the NDT methods and bits along the way. And if you want to do some cleaning, there's some pre-programmed uh, inspection and cleaning um, protocols that you can program. Uh, but really it's up to the, um, really sort of our clients to help us build this this GUI um, and sort of just, yeah, happy to work with them along the journey and just see what they want to add into that. Uh, we're seeing some really interesting feedback on uh, different things people would like to integrate on. And the last slide's really just the, the extra webinars. Um, Jared, I'm not sure if there's any questions apart from that, mate. Um, yeah, cool. I, I was kind of waiting. Um, so there's a uh, question, kind of how how do you see this rolling out? So training, um, is it something we're going to uh, sort of provide service companies or are we sort of doing it in-house ourselves? Yeah, it's a good one. I guess it's the way we run most of our other things. Um, so subscription service, early adopters, there's a, two different programs with that. We don't want to rent this out short term. Um, the key for us is it's quite a a niche technology, we want to make sure that people know how to use it. So two different ways we do that. We'll go to site if it's a new technology. So we'll work with the operator, work with the service providers, we'll work with the client and engage them um, and then actually go to site with them. Um, if need be, especially if it's the first job, we will run the equipment, they can run the cleaning or they can run the, um, the MDT. Um, or then the other option is actually doing, uh, there's some structured training through Lab 61 uh, where there's a sort of few day course on not only Magneto because that's that's the one part, but it's the 
the other part of inspections, the other part of cleaning. It's uh, looking after the equipment, it's making sure you've got the right scan plans in place and teaching people how to do all of that just through our Lab 61 program. Um, so yeah, I guess two different ways, but also want to try and make sure that the technology um, is used in the correct fashion. Um, but happy to train people uh, and then um, or also help them on site if need be. We, we're happy to go to site if it, um, if it helps our clients out along the way as well. Cool. Um, just another question coming through there as well. Uh, any projects in the Middle East? So I guess uh, we'll put that into two parts, uh, Nexus and Magneto. Well, that's a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're engaged with uh, just the top of my head, three different um, operators there and um, there's some service providers there we're working with as well. Um, I can't share specific projects, but they're, they're based on, uh, there's some crude storage facilities, uh, also some, uh, there's some LNG, not LNG, um, there's unleaded facilities and then the diesel storage um, facilities as well. So we're working specifically on, on those with a couple of um, places in the Middle East. Um, so that's not necessarily Magneto related. That's some of our other crawlers. Um, Jared actually did a really good uh, in-service diesel tank webinar um, last week, uh, which actually covered one of the scopes we did in the Middle East. Um, so yes, we there is engagement in some of the scopes. We actually run that through a different department um, or different office, just in terms of time frames. But there is definitely some scope there. Um, in terms of Magneto, no, nothing specifically. Um, most of our clients tend to be uh, sort of Singapore, or most of our early adopters is anywhere around Singapore um, and Australia um, as well. And also Houston for that as well. Yeah, true. Sorry, mate. Yeah, Houston as well. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Magneto sitting behind me was in Houston uh, for about six months, I think. Um, came back very recently. Cool. I'm just conscious of time, Rick. Um, I know Nick's doing SAR next week. He um, is. Um, yeah, so... so Someone asked, sorry, man, someone asked about the magnetic crawler. So that's the photo of it. Um, sorry, mate, if you want to jump into SAR. No, no, you can, you can run with it. Um. Yeah, so Nick, uh, close mate, colleague, uh, is be actually running through the SAR, so wireless system, um, being able to do NDT with that. Uh, he will most likely have it with him in the office, uh, but there's some videos and uh, some discussion points as well. Um, for the person who asked earlier about wireless systems, um, ready to go, so we've used that on site and um, actually used it locally just the other day as well. So that, that's ready to go. Um, and they just, we do, they are booked in, um, but if you follow the LinkedIn page, you'll flick me an email or a phone call as well. Um, or then I don't think they're on our website much anymore, but our LinkedIn page has all the, the webinars coming up. Um, we do some, some ways to recovery inspection. There's some drone inspection side of it. Um, uh, the rotor map, which is the cleaning. There's a whole bunch of, uh, webinars we do. Uh, one of the interesting ones, I guess, which is on list on here is we do private webinars as well. Um, we actually did one this morning, but uh, there's a yeah private webinars where we would engage with the client. Uh, they would tell us what they want to know. Uh, so if there's a specific problem they have, or there's a specific uh, technology you want to look at, uh, we engage with them an hour, a couple of hours. Only then it sort of keeps that um, discussion nice and private. They can share what they need to, uh, and then we help along the way regardless of the time. We did one this morning uh, with Houston as well. Cool. Uh, thanks, Rick. Uh, just for everyone, um, thanks everyone for coming. It's um, good having all the people showing up. Uh, Rick's just put his contact details back on the slide. So um, if there's questions related to anything, not just Magneto, feel free to contact him and um, uh, one of us can follow it up. Um, I'm Jared Asquith. So exactly the same email format, I mean, you can email me as well. Um, again, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing some, some of you guys again next week for the SAR robot. Thank you.